Hello and welcome back to Mirion Galactic Survival. In today's video, I want to showcase a builder who has seemingly come out of nowhere, but has obviously been building for some time. Hackendiver, and in particular, his ARC series of blueprints that he's published on the workshop. Now, as always, what I'll do is I'll link down below to his workshop page so that you guys can head over there and check these builds out for yourself. Uh, what I've also done here in creative mode is spawned a bunch of them in so that we can have a look around them today. Now, what I really like about his arc series is that it is all sort of uniform, uh, a bit like Jay Randall's Creel and Scar. And uh, a lot of other creators are doing it as well, where they're sort of creating these kind of factions. Now, Eggendiver hasn't gone to the length of writing any lore for the ARC series of structures yet. Uh, but what I did want to do today is show you through them because I think they uh, they look fantastic. And um, the in particular, these walls that he's created are completely modular and allow you to sort of connect them together to create sort of fortresses along with his defense towers, which conveniently just about go over the height of the walls uh, if you place them right and I'm not sure whether he intended these to be inside the walls or outside the walls or not but you know these defense towers will definitely do the job I think on defending a base and if you have four of them in each corner of your sort of fortress style base setup I'm sure you'll be fine because not only have you got the defense towers but these walls have got cannon turrets built into them as well these are all, I don't know how many bases I've got here, um, but you can kind of see this section where they blend together. So there you go, there's a join. Uh, where there are slightly different heights because my, my placing isn't quite good enough. And there's a join. So that's just one base wall spawned in there. And it's and it's not they're not particularly expensive either. The T2 wall, or the wall two, sorry. Here is 6,500 iron and a smidge of other resources. Uh, it, it's really nothing. Uh, so, you know, it, this is definitely endgame stuff, of course. But if you're looking to sort of establish a colony slash base somewhere on a planet, you could line up a bunch of these wall sections quite easily in your factory, ready to spawn in. And then you know, away you go. You spawn them in on a sort of, I would say, a flat area would be best. And you can link them together quite quite easily, although there is a little bit fiddly, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, just have a look to see what you can build with this Arc series stuff. And there's a gatehouse. So, you know, nice, reasonably sized gatehouse. I love the little detail of the generator in the roof there. It's nice. And just, uh, it's clean. Uh, the styling is quite clean. It's nice. I don't know if these solar panels would work with those blocks abo uh, above them, but the the lights indicate that they are working, so fair play. I've not seen that done to solar panels before, so it seems that they, they seem to work regardless. I don't know if that's a creative mode thing or, or what, but those lights on those solar panels indicate everything is fine while having these blocks over the top, and, and it just looks, it looks really cool. I think it looks good, which is why I wanted to bring this video to you today. Um, He's been on the front page of the workshop a few times, and some of you no doubt will have already seen his ARC series of stuff that he's published. But uh, it's definitely worth checking out, because these are some fantastic builds. Even the, the defense towers here, very, very useful, just on their own. Uh, Solar-powered defense towers. There's just missiles, artillery, and 30 mils. And again, not hugely expensive. 11,000 Satium. Yeah, yeah. Might be quite difficult to get a hold of 11,000 Satium, but you get a combat steel solar powered defense tower out of it. I think it's pretty good. Um, and inside, what we got here is we've got a few other bases as well. So he's got his kind of little starter outpost here, which is quite nice. You've got grow plots, uh, some of the basic stuff that you need, like just some storage and a small constructor. This is this will get you going quite early on. And there's plenty of room in there to sort of build it up with cargo extensions and large constructors and stuff and even guns eventually I've, I've lowered it slightly too far into the ground for these uh sentry guns to be fully effective um but if you place it correctly unlike i have then that should serve you quite well from the get-go um and you know as you can see they are all prefixed with the name arc so if you go and subscribe to this entire arc series on the workshop uh you'll be able to 
get hold of each one of these quite easily within your uh, never ending if it's anything like mine it's never ending anyway list of uh, blueprints in your blueprint library but yeah the t1 arc a thousand carbon substrate at 334 stone dust it's nothing it's nothing and you get yourself a nice little looking starter base straight up and then you can build up from there now i'll go through the big one in a second let's go through the hydroponics here the arc hydroponics as the name suggests is a huge uh, garden structure with many many grow plots bridges and a few extra mod cons as well he's uh, linked up the grow lights to signal logic here as well so you can turn off and on various plots depending on whether you need them to grow or not but um, I'm loving the styling just the use of the glass and this raised floor above all the the piping you know me I love I love a bit of piping and he's done very well with the piping stuff here it just looks fantastic really really good really good use of blocks really good use of texture and spacing reminds me of a young j randall <laughs> i don't know i think it looks awesome so yeah i mean that one's pretty simple straightforward uh it's the hydroponics it's covered in solar panels as as is kind of everything else is it's got its own defenses as well in, in the form of four uh cannon turrets on the top and four underneath as well so uh, you should be able to defend, I suppose, if it is isolated reasonably well. Although I would recommend having some defenses around your hydroponics. And then, of course, this middle one here. The base of operations will set you back 46,000 iron ingots and lots of other stuff, including the tier 4 uh, optronic bridges and matrices for CPU. And is a sizable class 26 and it is very well armed as you can see with sort of dual mounted defense turrets including plasma black cannons uh your favorite cannon turrets and uh he's he's done some practical things amongst all the sort of good looking kind of support struts and piping and things like that there's a one a, a wi-fi here just to extend the range out significantly more than the base itself and again solar power look at that landing pad on the roof as well it's beautifully asymmetrical uh and symmetrical at the same time because you've got a, a symmetrical base for the roof here you've got this little outbuilding off to the side which is more grow blots just in case the hydroponics wasn't enough or if you had one or the other it is uh just like i said uniformly textured Colored and uh, I'm loving all the kind of thin block use that he's got. These like struts going down, support struts curving down, and stuff like that. It looks fantastic. It's really, really good. Head inside. I'm going to kind of rush through this stuff because there's so much to show you, but inside is what you would expect kind of a tier four base, large manufacturing capacity, along with just continuation of the styling that we're used to from the outside, and this huge beautiful double level hangar bay here you, you really using the heavy glass and stuff so so very nicely i like it i like it and again with that kind of glass floor with the piping and the engineering stuff underneath it is it's a really really nice effect that's practically you know it's it's got a lot of storage in here you've got 10 constructors container extensions six of them i believe all six are 320,000 su storage capacity so mm, yeah a fair bit of storage plus a bunch of other cargo containers as well or fridges and so on and so forth so <laughs> you should just park a fleet of stuff in here very very nicely which is exactly what I've just done. I've just spawned in um, all of his arc hover vessels and small vessels. Uh, there's a few capital vessels that he's got as well, but we'll wait to go up into orbit to have a look at those ones. But yes, again, looking at the list of arc stuff, it does come with a myriad of hover miners that are very well laid out. Very, very, uh, again, in keeping with the same sort of themes, styles, and uh, just generally nice looking. This one's even got two GAT turrets on the top, which may possibly be an issue when mining, but they are retractable. So you can just simply sink them back into the hull, carry on mining, looks good. 
start your collection with this tiny little star hover vessel using the little hover boosters as well again great use of piping and integration into those rounded sort of storage boxes and stuff it looks fantastic very little hover vessel to get started with um moving on to sort of svs looking like a kind of cargo -y transport sv and just very clean and tidy throughout and consistent with the sort of styling and stuff it all looks the business this looks like uh, just a sort of normal kind of explorer ship uh, hover vessel uh, with lots of gap turrets and stuff like that and uh, a front mounted sort of cockpit here this would be something we'd probably go and uh, explore with while doing maybe a slight bit of looting as well although cargo capacity wise it's not huge, but it would be very useful, I think, to park outside uh, a POI while you go in and deal with it. It is very well protected. Then you've got your sort of combat hover vessels as well. It's just proper end game kind of heavy duty stuff covered in turrets. I like this kind of midsection indent thing that he's got going on with his builds, where he's just stashing these, these GAT turrets in there rocket launchers and everything on the roof although they will have a hard time shooting forwards because they're all blocking each other but from diagonal broadside angles you'll probably get a good fire profile there and ultimately it's uniform it fits in with the styling of everything else and inside it's just nice and tidy clean as well so very very good all sort of uniform for the faction and they look absolutely it's like they're supposed to be here don't they <laughs> inside this base we have a quick look on the roof here we've got one of his um cvs this is actually a mining cv and again the level of detail that he goes to is in keeping with the rest of his builds he's got that kind of split mid-level thing going on uh but the, even the just the, what he's done around the thrusters there looks great that is the front of the ship i believe it's difficult to tell <laughs> that's judging by the rocket launchers there i would say that's the front if we have a quick look inside um you've got everything i think you'll expect from a kind of mining cv from production and storage or medical and then he's got this amazing little sort of space in the middle here which is actually where the mining turrets this isn't a uh single direction coaxial mining vessel it's got the turrets and you'd kind of sit in your your uh, passenger seat or your pilot seat here and you take control of the turrets that way great for a small faction to use uh get two friends with you to fire up those turrets while you sort of swing it around uh, an asteroid and just everything everything is in here this thing looks so industrial on the inside you've got these engines kind of just taking up this space this warning signs everywhere um, and I'm not sure about using the toilet might get a bit hot next to this thruster but ultimately the practicality of it being there is there so you can use it it's even got a little bit of garden at the top next to its shield generator and uh, it's just uh, it's a it's quite fun just exploring this ship you know <laughs> because it is just a bit chaotic but it works it's so good everything is I don't know how it, it, it it's obviously just sort of crammed in here there's not a huge amount of space to fit everything in there how he wanted but he's managed to make it work within the style that he's gone for as well even with the railings and stuff and i love a good bit of railing there's a bit missing there but you know a ball block gardens as well uh and this glass middle section is just great really really good really well done is in generators and pentaxid tanks and stuff as well and that's the rear of the ship that is um just one of his cvs i like this detail with the generator i'm not so sure it's entirely well protected although there is heavy glass here that is a window to death <laughs> shoot here <laughs> obviously you know it's pve the drones are stupid so i think it'll be fine and it is uh for a mining ship very well armed so that's quite a nice little boat that one the Bronco will set you back at 7,900 iron and uh, 4,200 Neo, which is actually not bad at all. 36 grow plots, it's tier 4, uh, so you will need 
the maximum tier four optronic bridges and stuff it is also a lot of arrestrums as cosium because of those drills and also he's got artillery on there as well and the big thrusters so build this thing up and you're going to need those big thrusters to get this thing moving around a lot but uh yeah it's it's nice it's nice so there we go let's uh, just before we head up into space, let's go back to these walls a second. I wanted to show you how how I place them uh, because they are a little bit of a pain. So, but hopefully, my suffering can lead to your convenience. So, as you can see, I mean, I'm in God mode at the moment as well. If I wasn't in God mode, this would be even more difficult to do because um, you're so close to the wall. I have no idea if it's lining up with uh, the wall next to it what i did is just whip yourself into god mode unless you're playing on a multiplayer server there's no shame in it when you're placing bases like that need to be aligned like this go into third person and just zoom out as far as you can okay and then you get a much better view on aligning them up and i wouldn't line them up using the supports or the piping i'd line them up using the black pillars so line the black pillar up on the far left hand side with the black pillar of the one next to it then use your page down key or whatever you've remapped it to to lower it into place now this isn't a foolproof you will find that there will be inconsistencies in the level uh, but just sort of put it as best you can i think and then you know you will find that there is a height discrepancy between the two joins sometimes but ultimately there you go it's placed and uh, I'm hoping this will line up now because I've kind of the gate over there kind of glitched into the other one. So yeah, I think it used up a little bit more space uh, or used up a little less space than it should have. And now I've got a problem here. Yeah, but this doesn't quite line up properly. So that's a shame. But that's 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 my fault uh, for lining it up incorrectly. I'll show you what I mean. This is the gate, and I think the ultimate culprit of why this didn't line up. This gate is actually glitched into this wall uh, by our, our by the, the the single pillar is. But you can kind of see the graphics glitching through a little bit every now and again. But just that space there, a whole sort of block and a bit, was enough to put out the entire sort of sequence there. I think also if I had uh, kept that in line properly then this wall would probably line up to the end of this one quite nicely as it is unfortunately I've I've messed it up <laughs> and now I can't complete the wall but just be aware that when you're placing it use you first of all use your god mode don't be afraid of using your god mode because game doesn't really give you the options to place things quite very precisely when you need to just be aware that these gates can and they did this by accident they can glitch in to the wall segments you need to make sure that there is a little bit of spacing between the gate and the wall like here or you will run out of room as i have done trying to link this wall back up and to correct this i'd have to delete this sort of quarter of the wall again and uh, put it back so it is very fiddly put it that way it is very fiddly but you get it done it looks awesome how cool that looks down there just amazing just a solid wall of of uh of, of projectile turrets of 30 mil turrets and because each of one of these is an individual base you're not going over the turret limits if you if you're playing with turret limits on Anyway, let's get up into orbit and I'll show you the rest of the ARC series. So from speaking with uh, Mr. Heckendiver himself, he told me that this uh, orbital headquarters took him over 100 hours of effort to complete. And you can kind of see why just, just from this far out, the, the detail with the half blocks and the, and the uh, texturing he's gone to is, is pretty awesome. Uh, this entire orbital outpost looks really sweet. Um, including the little repair arm that he's got going up on here again he's got this kind of really nice style coupled with really good practical uh, elements to his builds 
Now the whole arc series started with the fleet carrier here, which is this monster of a CV. It's actually a pretty reasonably sized endgame CV. Uh, very well armed and again you know the texturing job the shaping he's done is really good i love all the arches uh the sweeping supports and pylons that he's got around the bridge here even the sort of spaced armor he's got up there where it's got javelin written and stuff looks really really good it looks so well integrated into the into the ship it's difficult to tell where the hull starts and the kind of deco finishes if you know what i mean um this little sv pads on the side here really really cool and you just got this amazing view of the superstructure through here it just looks awesome so so cool so very detailed uh and then the ship itself is obviously an end game ship it'll have everything you expect but it also has a huge amount of hangar space not only in the back here where you've got plenty of space for some hover vessels or sps whatever you like if you proceed into the ship uh, into the main hangar bay which is in the center of the vessel you have even more space <laughs> this is why it's called the fleet carrier uh, yeah you, you've got a lot of room in here for SVs uh, a top loading uh, hangar bay door there as well as a sort of bottom loading smaller one that comes out of the, the, the bottom side for HV loading and stuff like that so yeah, very, very nice, clean uh, texturing throughout, uniform along with the rest of the ARC series. Nice use of the heavy glass and the lighting, piping and stuff. You know how I feel about piping. Uh, it all looks really good. I really like it. Plus, like I said, a lot of sort of really good practical applications within here, like the boxes next to the SVs so that you can keep ammunition for the, each vessel type. I think you missed a bit of texturing though. Second diver. I think I just spotted that. Um, you're not the only one. I do it all the time. <laughs> I always miss a bit of texture. Right. In here is all your sensitive bits. So not only has he gone for the tier 4, he's put the tier 3 in there. Just in case uh, one tier 4 gets shot out, the whole thing doesn't just shut down. So, And that's a nice room for the core warp drive. As a carrier, you'd probably want to keep it away from most enemies and just use your SVs as best you can, but it is reasonably well armed anyway that it should be able to deal with any space drones, low level patrol vessels, and perhaps even some of the, the Xerax patrol vessels. But I'd probably be quite cautious against taking it up against legacy stuff just because it is quite thinly armored, albeit with. Um, what is this? Hit points 404. It's just steel armor. So keep that in mind. The carrier, not a combat ship. It's got the guns, it's got shields. So I wouldn't take it up against legacy stuff. Uh, use it as a carrier, keep it protected. It is your mobile base. Other ships that he's got up here is the Explorer here, um, which is a nice little starter CV. It's well armed with Gats and 15 mil. Uh, thrusters in sort of all directions a nice decent hangar bay uh, for a hover vessel or a small vessel and it's got everything you kind of need in a starter vessel basic storage so uh, space for upgrades such as shield generator frontal access on ground uh, capacity for looting and passenger seats room for expansion and a nice healthy sized garden as well so you should be able to make a very good start in the game with this one. Plenty of room on the roof as well for a, another ship. Good little starter tier 2 CV to get yourself going. And if you're sort of looking to play in the theme of the ARC series, again, it fits in very nicely. The other ship he's got up here is the Liberator. And the Liberator is kind of your mid-game combat CV. You've got your lasers. I think these are actually drills. Yeah. You've got your lasers and your drills at the front. So you're kind of doing everything with the one CV. Although I, the drills at the front there would probably get... If your shields went down, they'd get destroyed first. So there's quite a lot of valuable sort of hardware at the front of the ship there. I just be cautious. But as a mid-game CV, you've got ample hangar bay for your multiple SVs and hover vessels. Um, good storage as well 
uh, access to everything it's quite conveniently laid out and again style look of it is very nice fits in with the arc series it's really good instructors hidden in the walls i love that more storage shield generator oh i've not been down here it's a jeffrey's tube you know how you feel about jeffrey's tube i love a jeffrey's tube <laughs> access to all your sort of gubbins through there it's really good well, there's a teleporter here as well and your amply sized garden which you know seems to come with every arc series ship or base at the moment lots of garden capacity in all these things <laughs> very nice mid-game sort of cv there a little upgrade from the explorer um before you head on to then the javelin perhaps but let's have a look inside the orbital HQ here, uh, which is, I think, probably the flagship build in the Ark series, and I think you could probably see why. It is very, very good looking, and uh, like I said, it did take him on 100 plus hours of effort to get this bad boy done. Let's have a quick look through the front door here. Yep. Well, already it's a very welcoming atmosphere. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Quarks bar. I love that. There's two of them, in fact. Very nice little RP value. Bars, uh, Medical O2. Deco in the O2 tanks into the build itself. I like that. And this huge hangar bay, which just looks very, very impressive. Bear in mind, I'm in God mode as well, so in God mode you kind of don't really get a scale of things until you sort of zoom out. There you go. <laughs> There's my tiny little person. Hello. Can you can you sense the echo in here? It is a mighty hangar bay, and the glass bottom um, windows on the bottom and stuff just look amazing. Although slightly also worrying. It's like, oh my god, do not look get, look down, right? Um, that is a long way down back to that planet. But uh, yeah, this just looks awesome. It just There's so much to look at um, and figure out in this place. Again, he's gone with the storage boxes up on these sort of landing pads that I suppose are kind of separated by, the again, the use of heavy glass and piping that he so does love. And uh, so do I. I think it looks amazing. Let's head down into this hangar bay here. Again, just use a simple thing like uh, differentiating the color gray on the same texture uh, has a huge impact into separating this thing out and uh, making it look the way it does. Again, scale. <laughs> Hello! It's huge and it looks awesome. I don't even know how to get down there. I thought that's what, I thought that what I'm looking at now was here where I'm stood, but obviously not. It's even lower down than I thought it was. It's an optical illusion. Let's head over here where we've got some production facilities and some storage perfectly located next to uh, the hangar bay. The detailing use of half blocks is awesome. Big storage, 320k. A furnace. Um, portion gets hot. Look at the superstructure through there. That's so good. You can see so far, yeah, I don't have no idea what I'm looking at. There you go. <laughs> Engineering, I think. Wow. Every inch of this place is just pristinely textured. I love it. Even like this potted plant here that would have no place in such a engineering section, but it belongs there. Uh, I have no idea where I am. Oh, yeah, I think this is back in the main hangar bay. We, we've made a big deal over the repair station here, haven't we? Look at that. <laughs> the piping is strong. Uh, and I think this is a copy of the other side. That you know, Lots of sort of fuel tanks, O2 tanks, and just deco. It looks amazing. It looks awesome. Kind of the depth that he's gone... That he's managed to, to create with the different layers of thin blocks and stuff is really <laughs> i've not seen it before I, 
I didn't do I didn't pre-run this one. I did I did a little run around the others, but I didn't pre-run this one. And uh I'm sort of struggling to to point things out really. I, think <laughs> I just just I'm speechless. Let's have a quick look down. We've got what we got here, ammo box. Big ammo box. So this is the bit that I thought was the level up. What does this have a purpose? Or is it is we outside right now? I think we are just in the the throngs of space. Yeah, this just goes out. Like <laughs> it's a nice space promenade. <laughs> some with some deco um console blocks in it. Alright, I can get behind that. That's fine. Airlocks. Yeah. Cool. So we're gonna go up. So that's the floor we started on. Yeah, okay. It'll get my bearings, bear with. Generator. Here we go. Right, what we got here then? Oh, we got the repair station is up here. Okay, so this must go off over to the arm, the big repair arm that we saw on the outside. And then we've got access to the top deck here. Wow. Looks like an aircraft carrier, doesn't it? Holy moly, look at this. <laughs> you found a hole, Captain. Yikes. That is... That holds absolutely zero practical application, but it looks amazing. Actually, I tell a lie. You park a ship on here, and you've got yourself uh, some undercarriage access... Oh, hello. I pressed God mode too, too late. Undercarriage access there, haven't you? And here's actually a glass bridge. Barely see it, but that is actually a glass bridge across. Yeah, undercarriage repair access maybe. Um, even more landing pads on the top here, and arc orbital HQ. Couple of sentries. I like this little moat thing going around here, and another huge garden, <laughs> um, which is yeah, very very elegantly done with piping and stuff. I like it. Fridges. Food processors. This oh, it can't go through there. This goes back down to another garden. <laughs> oh, an even bigger one. <laughs> if you're complaining that you're short of food, then there's something wrong. Um, goes down to oh, like little canteen R and R area. Shield generator, coriness. Some flashy lights going on. Big big look at that view out there beautiful love it another potted plant and uh, another little R&R &R. this is above the little engineering section that I was gawking at earlier yeah generator you're not even going to come up here unless you're in god mode but look at the detail he's put into this and that's because you can see it from down there so it adds to the layered kind of depth of how big it feels from down there. Very clever. Very clever indeed. I am somewhat intimidated. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> how are you guys feeling right now? <laughs> okay. Um, let's go back up to... We were up that garden then that guard and this continues to go up for some way to the top of the tower where we have even more uh, canteens and stuff at the top of the tower lots look at that that view that heavy glass all the way around and here we go to our the top landing pads here for more cv docks or sv docks i would say cv would soft dock against these passengers flow through into this arrivals area where they would then satisfy their quench for fast food um, while enjoying the view and the hustle and bustle of this mighty space station. I don't even think I've seen everything that this thing has to offer. I should imagine there is great areas of it that I've completely and utterly missed. But... Uh, yeah, this, this hangar bay just steals the show. It really does. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Amazing. Amazing work. 100 hours plus hours of effort. You can see why Tech and Diver uh, link to his workshop page 
in the video description down below. By all means, please do go ahead and check out and subscribe to his stuff and have a look around yourself. Maybe you could use it in your game. It is all pretty damn good looking and also practical uh, in its design. So thank you very much, Heck and Diver, for your relentless work and uh, providing these blueprints for us to all enjoy. Um, make sure if you do subscribe to this stuff, give it a cheeky little rate up on Steam. Uh, it really helps the creator um, put his work out to everyone so everyone can enjoy and see it. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave your feedback and comments down below. I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.